All right, I'm back. And in this video, I am now going to look at how to actually make use of this data set. Just as a reminder, this is the quick draw data set. By the way, there is so much goofy, fun, creative, interesting things you could do with this data set that have nothing to do with its whole machine learning, neural network nonsense stuff. So hopefully this video will be useful for you anyway and encourage you to make creative projects with the data set. And I will try to link in the video's description to some projects that other people have made. Um, but let's talk about how I'm going to get access to this data and use it. So one thing we know, here's all the kitty cats. And we can say, look, well, I really like this one. So I'm going to look at uh, this one, click on it. So one thing you'll notice, it's got a number. It actually is, uh, it's got a, um, it's, it has a date when it was drawn and what country it was drawn from, which is interesting, by the way, in light of my discussion of missing data sets and the work of Mimi O that I talked about a little bit in the previous video, thinking about when you're working with a data set, where does it come from? Who collected it? What's missing from that data set? Why are you using it? Is what you're using it with going to hurt somebody? Think about these questions. Now, fortunately for us, I think we're just going to make a fun, goofy drawing thing, and I think we're going to be OK. But those are really key and important questions. Now, this is a nice little interface to look at the data. On GitHub, however, I can go to GitHub Quick Draw Data Set, and here is the documentation for what kind of formats the data is actually in. So if I scroll down here for a little bit, we can see the data is actually available in these ndjson files. And what's interesting about this is you can see like, oh look, there's an ID. Every single drawing has a unique identifier. And I, I know I'm standing in front of some of this, so let me move this over. Um, it has uh, a word, which I would assume is the category. Yes, what the, what the player of the game said, will you please draw this? Um, and when it was created, what country, and then the drawing itself. And look at this. Look at all these numbers. What are those numbers? So if you remember from my previous video, what I'm trying to do is do image classification with a simple 28 by 28 pixel image. But the data itself is actually all of the vector points, the path of the drawing. And that's why when I'm on this page, as I hover over it, you can actually see a replay of how the thing was drawn itself. So that's something I would hope to come back and make a future video about using that data. But what I actually want to use I'm going to go back to here, is a different way that the data is formatted. So there, you can go in here, there's binary files, but this is what I want, NumPy bitmaps. So a NumPy bitmap is a special data format that stores all of the pixels of a bitmap version of the drawing in a format that the Python library NumPy can read very easily with np.load. Now, if I were a person who lived in the regular world, I would see this and go, oh, perfect. I'm just going to go and do my project with NumPy because that's what people do. But I am a person who lives in this weird world of wanting to do things in JavaScript and in the browser and sometimes in processing. So what I want to do in this video is look at how I can get access to the NumPy bitmapped data format in an environment that's not NumPy and then kind of clean or normalize or organize the data in such a way that I can use it for my machine learning doodle classification project. All right, so let's get the data. If you click through and read this documentation, you'll find that it is here. The data is available on the Google Cloud platform. Uh, <laughs> if you want to listen to me, uh, never mind. I was, I was thinking a song earlier that I think I shall not speak about. Um, and so these are all the different formats. I'm going to go here under NumPy bitmap. And I'm going to see, OK, look at this. Now, I think we have to start with rainbow. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, guess what? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to get the rainbow.npy file, and it's downloading. It's a very large file. It is about 100 megabytes. So I don't know how many drawings are in that exactly. Uh, we're going to figure that out when I open up the file. But what I want to do is make for myself, I want to make a little simple uh, training and testing set with just 1,000 drawings in it. Again. To do this kind of work effectively, the more data I have, probably the better, but to demonstrate it in a quick and friendly way in a YouTube video, using a small data set is probably going to be best. And then you, the viewer, could take my code, do something with it, kind of expand the data set. All right. So it should have downloaded by now. I'm going to work with pre-processing this data in the processing programming environment, which is a Java-based platform. Um, 
I could do this <laughs> in Python. I could actually go directly to JavaScript now, but I'm just doing this to demonstrate it. And it's kind of what I would do because I know processing the best probably. So I'm going to just make a little uh, a f sketch called Quick Draw Data. Let me put it on the desktop. Um, I'm going to open up the sketch folder and I'm going to grab this file and put it in there. In theory, what I should do is probably uh, make a folder called data and put it in, uh, put it in there. And then I, I'm just going to rename it. It has a long name. I'm going to rename it to rainbow.npy. Okay. So now, processing, one of the reasons why I picked processing is it has a function called load bytes. And I'm going to say, <laughs> I was about to say let, but I'm going to say Byte, uh, I'm going to say uh, byte, boy, I've forgotten how to program in Java. Byte data equals load bytes rainbow.npy. So this is a nice little function. Let me bring the console up here because I'm on a console, uh, print stuff to the console. Let's just say print line data.length. So I'm going to run this. And we can see, look at that. That data, that array, I now have. Uh, 99 million bytes. So interestingly, let's try to figure out how many images that is. Well, I know that each image is 28 by 28. And so that's 784 total. So total equals data.length divided by 784. And let's see what we get. Now, I really should do this as a floating point. To sh Whoa, and let's, <laughs> let's print line uh, total. So that's about 126,000 images. Now the thing is, this isn't actually correct. And if I wanted to do some research, most data files will actually have bytes at the beginning that aren't the data you want, but are something called header bytes. And those header bytes describe the data, like this is what's in here, this is what format it is, this is how much of it there is. And what I probably should do is look at the NumPy um, binary file uh, data format. If I Google that, I'm going to get somewhere, I'm going to get some page that explains the NPY. I should have just scratched that. I should have just uh, looked for NPY file format. And I'm going to find some information about how it's formatted. Now, here's the thing. I looked at this yesterday, and I happen to know that there's about 80 extra bytes on the beginning. <laughs> Not about, exactly 80 extra bytes. So what I'm actually going to say is data.length minus 80 because that's how many bytes that are actually in that array that have to do with the pixels. And we're going to see that's exactly how many, 126,000 images. So let's just see if everything's going correctly, we could at least look at the first one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called start. And I'm going to say start at 80. And then I'm going to look at 784 bytes. And the index is i plus 80. And what I want to do is also create, let me make an image that is 28 by 28. Let me load the pixels of that image because I'm going to write the bytes into an image so I can look at it. And then I'm going to say int val equals, now we're going to run into an issue, but I'll fix it. I'm <laughs> anticipating things. Oh, and I need to say RGB. So when I say create image, I've got to say RGB. So value equals, uh, what did I call it? Just data, data. Oh, and this should be plus start data index, uh, data index. That's the value. And then I want to say image dot pixels. I equals that value. Then I want to say image dot update pixels. And then I want to just draw that image image zero, zero. Look at that. Oh, is that really a rainbow? Maybe I, sh I should have picked something else because I kind of wanted to see like, is this really right? So that is the first rainbow. Uh, now, something's a little weird, like why is there some yellow and some blue? So I haven't, been for, I haven't been very thoughtful about this. One thing that's happening is the byte values that are actually coming in there are signed bytes. So they're going to have be between like negative 127 and positive 127 or something approximately like that. So I can actually apply a, um, a bitwise operation, and I just sort of like and it with some hexadecimal numbers. <laughs> I could kind of go through that in a different video, but this is going to, ch I believe, if I'm doing this correctly, change it from an unsigned byte to a signed byte to give me a range between 0 and 255. So I, I should try to link to a resource about bitwise operations or make one myself at some point. 
Um, so now you can see, okay, well that's weird. Now it's blue. Well, the reason why it's blue is I'm actually, this is a number between zero and 255, val is, and I'm setting that number to be the pixel color, but a color is an RGB color. So in processing, if I just wrap this in the color function, it'll take that number and make it into an RGB color with that value as the red, green, and blue value. Okay, so now we should see, there it is. There's somebody's rainbow. All right, so let's get a little further with this now. Let's make a window that's 280 by 280. Uh, let's do this. Let's have, um, let's forget about, this was just for my own curiosity. Let's say we're going to look at um, 200, 100 images, right? 10, let's say 10, 10 by 10. So I'm gonna say for int n equals zero, n is less than total, n plus plus. We're gonna do this, um, we're gonna do this 100 times. And so the start is 80 plus n times 784, right? Because each image is gonna start by the 80 header bytes and then how, what image we're on times 784 pixels. So even if I just did this right now, we should see there's the last rainbow. <laughs> I just drew them all on top of each other. But now I need to get an X value, which is N modulus 10, right? Because I want the sort of column to be, um, uh, modulus 10 meaning the remainder of dividing by 10. So the column goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, and the um, Y value to be N divided by 10. So the, for the first 10, I'm in row 0. For the next 10, I'm in row 1. And so now I should get, ooh, what did I do wrong there? Um, did something wrong. Oh yeah, 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 whoops. So I forgot, this should be, well, okay, this should be 28, and these should all be in variables. Right, because they're each 28 by 28 pixels wide. So I, I guess I was drawing the last one 10 pixels over. That was the problem. Format, it won't do it for me, okay. There we go, all right, so there are all my rainbows. I don't like how they're white on black. So I'm just going to say uh, 255 minus. And come on, there we go. Rainbows, yay, rainbows. Okay. All right, so we've done it. We've accessed the data. I kind of understand how it works. Now what I want to do is save it out into a format that I can easily use in P5. I'm thinking about this. So on the one hand, I could save this uh, to like, I could rewrite the data to like a JSON format that I'm happy with. I'm gonna, uh, weirdly I think what I wanna do is load the data in as binary into JavaScript because I think it's probably worth doing that. As an exercise yourself, you might think about rewriting. It's, it's also processing, it's a bit convoluted to write out a JSON file from processing, although quite possible. So I think for simplicity, what I wanna do now is just save bytes. So let's say what I, but what I want to do, save a file with only 1,000 images in it, right? It's because I don't want to have to carry with me this 100 megabyte file while I'm just trying to learn and figure this stuff out. So I'd make a much smaller file with just 1,000 in it. And so let's look at how I would do that. So um, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it out data. And it's a new byte array with, um, uh, total times 784. And again, you know, the thing is these numbers are never going to change. So I'm kind of happy with just hard coding them in there, but obviously I should refactor and, and make all tw the 28 and the 784. I mean, all I need is that 28 and the 80 should be a variable, but we're going to be fine. So I want to save, I'm going to save out 200, uh, 280, 700, uh, 100 of these images. And so while I'm going through here, I'm just going to do uh, out index is zero. So every time I get a new uh, value, I'm just going to say out data out index e equals that value. And then I'm just going to say out index plus plus. So as I'm going through, I'm just going to write, and this, mm, so this is actually, I made this into an integer so I could use it in processing. I think if I do this, it will be happy with me. 
Um, I might have the same, anyway, so I think that, that I think is gonna be fine. And then what I'm going to do is at the very end, I'm gonna say save bytes. Um, what, what is this, rainbows, 100, I'll, I'll call it dot bin for binary. Rainbows 100 dot bin uh, and out data. So this is a function in processing that will save that array of bytes to a binary file. I'm calling it rainbows 100. I'm gonna run this. We can see, now I should be able to go to the directory. We can see there it is. And how big is this file? It's just 78 kilobytes. So I have 100 of them in a, just a binary file, but that's not, let's, let's, let's save 1,000 of them. And now that I'm saving it, I think probably there's no reason for me to have the image anymore. So let's, because I, I, the image is just to like sort of see that it works. Um, so let me comment that stuff out. And now I want to save rainbows 1,000 and I'm going to run it and there we are, rainbows1000.bin, and this is, this file is um, just 784 kilobytes. So this is really nice, because now when I move over to JavaScript, I could kind of use this very like lightweight data file that I can play around with, and later I could go get the full NumPy file, or, or uh, and I have this processing sketch, which just allows me to quickly work with the data and resize it, reformat it, that sort of thing. Um, Okay, so this is now the end of this particular video. In the next video, what I'm gonna do is look at loading these data files into JavaScript and dividing them into training and testing, uh, uh, training and testing data sets to, to use them ultimately with the neural network. And in between you watching, or me recording this particular video and the next one, I will go ahead and make a bunch more of these. So I will make one for trains and one for cats. I think I'll just do three. I don't know. Maybe when I come back, I'll have picked some different ones. But if, you know, pause if you're watching this as a playlist. Maybe go and play around with this data yourself. Think about how you might draw it in a different way in processing or in, in P5 and have some fun. And I'll see you in the next video.